God bless each and every one of you. We thank you for turning on the broadcast tonight. This is Word of Power Gospel Hour. My name is Reverend Ron Davis. I'm a minister of the gospel. I've been evangelist in the past. Been overseas and pray to go back. Amen. Waiting for a mighty revival in China. Hallelujah. Waiting for the doors open to go there. Hallelujah. I've been pastor of a couple churches. Hallelujah. And God put us on here. We've been on here since, I think, 1992. I'm, I'm pretty sure since 1992. So we've been on here about over 20 years. Hallelujah. And I pray during this time, you know, I, I, I as a minister, I have to preach what God tells me to preach. I can't compromise with the gospel. I know where God brought me from. Some of y'all don't like me. You think I'm a little hard. I know. But I'm going to tell you something. The devil is harder than me. I'm here to tell you because he wants to destroy you. The thief, John 10.10, 10, the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus said, I'll come to give you life and life more abundantly. But you know, Jesus said, if you love me, obey me. you got to obey Jesus. you got to obey the word. And if you don't, God puts ministers on to call you down unto repentance. And people don't like ministers for doing that. They don't like none of the prophets in the Old Testament. <clears throat> they stuck them in pits. They did everything to them. Took the bread and water away, everything. Beheaded him. John the Baptist was beheaded because he wouldn't compromise because he told the king he was in adultery. But you know what? He stood for what was right. We need to stand for what is right, not compromise for what is wrong. We need to quit calling that that's good, bad, and calling that that's bad, good. Can I hear an amen? Amen. Hallelujah. But I know where God brought me from. He brought me out of the mob. He saved me from doing about 400 consecutive years in prison. I was, I bought a sort of life sentence for some things I did in the past. A drug addict, an alcoholic. I've been a JDAC. I've been an AA. I've been all that. The only thing that set me free was Jesus. And I'm going to obey Jesus. And I'm going to do what he tells me to do. And I'm going to preach what he tells me to preach. Amen. Amen. And I pray that you're not offended. Jesus told people, he said, there be many that be offended in me. When you preach the word of Jesus, people will be offended in you. But you got to keep on doing it anyway, no matter what it costs. It costs Jesus his life. Are you willing to lay your life down for Jesus? He laid his down for us. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Anyway, I preach the truth. And I know during these years I preached some hard messages, but it was to call people into repentance. See, when you get out of the will of God or you get into sin, the enemy wants to set you up. He wants to destroy you. Amen. Does he come to steal, kill, and destroy? And if you don't repent and get out of sin and get back into the will of God, you open the door for the enemy to attack you. You open the door for the enemy to prematurely take you out. And there's Amen. nothing God can do when you're in the enemy's camp. Hey, come on need to get back in God's camp and stay there, especially in the day and hour we're living in. It's so close to the end. Can I hear an amen? Have a very powerful message today. Shall we pray? Father, I thank you today for your word. Heaven and earth pass away, but your word will never pass away. Yes. I pray you would anoint me, Father, to speak as an oracle of the living God today. I pray your word would go forth in power, Father God, to do whatever it needs to do, to save, to deliver, to heal, to bless people to convict people, to bring them back under repentance where you can set them back up on blessed ground again, Father. Lord, I pray for an outpouring of the Holy Spirit in this city, Father God. Well, I pray your will will be done in our lives and in our churches, Father. I pray that all your churches, you set them back on fire. That they would let Jesus back into their churches to have his will and way, Father God, and they would listen and follow it. That the under shepherds would listen and follow the shepherd, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Yes. God, I pray you set your church back on fire to fulfill the Great Commission. Father, we just love you and just thank you so much today. What can words ever say to you for what you have done for us, Father? We are, are eternally grateful and thankful. We give you glory and honor and praise in the holy name of Jesus. Yes. I pray your people's blessed today. and I pray you open their ears to hear what the Spirit is saying in Jesus' name. Amen. Everybody said, Amen. And amen. And amen. you know what amen means? Did it, did it, did it. That's all, folks. That's the end of it. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen.
I have a very powerful message today. <clears throat> you know in Revelation chapter 3, in Revelation chapter 2 and chapter 3, it talks about the seven churches, uh, the seven, I believe the seven different church ages, but there's different churches in each one of these ages. And I believe the conditions of these churches exist today. If they existed in that day, I'm sure they exist and probably worse in our day. Amen. I'm going to say that again. You read Revelation chapter 2, the message from the angel to the seven churches. Jesus shows them the shape they're in, their condition. And he also gives them an ultimatum and he calls them to repentance. And if they don't repent, he gives them an ultimatum what he will do to them. Some of it's not good. You need to read your Bibles. You need to get caught up on your Bible. Amen. A lot of people have worldly knowledge and wisdom, but they, they don't have spiritual knowledge and wisdom. Amen? Amen. They can keep up with football games and basketball games and players. How about keeping up with the disciples? How many disciples were there? Twelve? Amen. One died, hung himself? Amen. Come on, Judas. We need some spiritual knowledge and wisdom and understanding. Amen? Amen. Especially in the day we're living in. Hallelujah. So close to his return. We know not the day or the hour. All these people predicting when Jesus is going to come back is nothing but a bunch of liars. Scammers and spammers making money off of it. I'm here to tell you. The Bible says not even Jesus knows the day and the hour, but only the Father. Amen. And in Revelation, I think chapter 6, the Bible says there was... Silence in heaven for the space of a half an hour. That's when God is going to turn from a merciful God to a judging God and pour his wrath out. Amen. Amen. You don't want to go through that. Hallelujah. i tell you how to be miss that and be saved today. Amen. I believe we're living in the church age of Laodicea, the lukewarm cold church. And I want to get straight into this message today. It's very powerful. If you fall into these categories, I ask today, that I ask what Jesus asked. If you're in the condition that I'm speaking on and preaching on today, you need to repent. Because he told every church and the condition they was in to repent and to turn from that and get it right. We need to repent in our churches and get it right and turn from the condition they're in and what he told them they was in. Because he told the church of, of uh, Laodicea, he says, I reject you. I don't accept you. I reject you. I wish that were hot or cold because thou art lukewarm. I spew you out of my mouth. In other words, you make me sick. I regurgitate you because you make me that sick. Amen. Amen. He said, you're so blessed you don't even need me anymore. Hallelujah. He's outside, the Bible says, on the door knocking, trying to get back in his own church. They don't need him. They use him, hallelujah, for their gain. I'm so sick of these bless me preachers. I'm so sick of it, building their kingdoms and not the kingdom of heaven and filling heaven up. They filling their houses up with treasures. Come on, God's finished with that day. And these ones that's doing it in Revelation chapter 2, the church of Ephesus, he said, because you lost your first love. In other words, you're building your own kingdom and not mine. I'll take your lampstand. He'll take your church. Amen. And he's going to start taking some churches in this day if we don't get back on track and fulfill the Great Commission. I'm here to tell you. Amen. Hallelujah. There has been so much money sifted out of the kingdom of God. People building their own kingdoms, building their own mansions. God said, I already got a mansion built for you. Hallelujah. Jesus said, I go away. If I go not away, I would have told you so. He said, where I go, I'll prepare your place. In my Father's house are many mansions. You're building your mansions on the earth, and God has got you a mansion laid up in heaven and cost you nothing. Hallelujah. Glory Amen. to God. Hallelujah. And I'm here to tell you today, in the name of Jesus, all these prosperity messages has caused the church of Laodicea to be the way it was. They were wealthy. They were blessed. He said, I, I tried you buy me gold, tried to fire. Anoint your eyes with eyesight that you can see again. See what? See clearly the cross of Christ to fulfill the great commission. Amen. 
I want to get into this message today because this is the shape of the church age we're living in. Most churches, I hate to say it, is in this shape. Amen. Complacency and lukewarmness. It's dangerous to be complacent, people. To be complacent means being satisfied with how things are and not concerned about it or wanting to change them. Mark my self-satisfaction, especially when accompanied by unawareness of actual dangers or deficiencies. Complacency, a place of being satisfied with how things are and not wanting to make them better. A complacent feeling or condition. Please, especially with one's oneself or one's merits and advantages, situations, etc. Often without awareness of some potential danger or defect. Self-satisfied, contented, yet unconcerned and uneager to improve or change. Does this sound like a lot of the church today and Christians? With all the prosperity preaching and a lack of caring, unconcerned about the lost. Come on. Amen. Jesus came to seek and save the lost. The church today is like the church of Laodicea. Jesus rebuked them. They were materially wealthy but spiritually bankrupt. He told them to anoint their eyes. They had lost sight of the cross and what it meant, salvation Amen. for all. Yes. Not just a church or a few, but for everyone in the world. All nations, all peoples. Also means It also means pleased with one's own accomplishments. Yes. Pleased with self. Yes. Jesus said, deny self, pick up your cross, yes. deny yes. self and follow yes. me. It's a feeling of quiet pleasure or security and pleased where they're at. Not willing to move, to move <coughs> on or move ahead or change. Amen. Even though complacent people may seem pleased with themselves, we are rarely pleased with them. They are unconcerned by things that should concern them and they may neglect their duties. A complacent person might be heard saying, Oh, don't worry about it, when there really is something to worry about. Amen. Complacency is also linked with laziness and a lack of self-motivation. Yes. Does this sound like some in the churches? Some satisfied they are saved, but not concerned about getting anyone else saved. I pray this is touching your heart today, because this is a lot of conditions of the churches today. Amen. We yes. go, as we sit down in our little bless me club, we sit down in our little bless me club, and we don't care about nobody else, just bless each other. Amen. That's why Amen. Paul rebuked the church of Corinth. They sat around playing with their gifts, blessing each other, instead of getting the world in there and getting them saved and blessing them. They become nothing more but a bless me club. Amen. Yes, amen. A lot of churches no more than a bless me club. Come on, we need to repent of this today. Yes. Jesus said, if your condition is like this, you need to repent. Or I'm going to tell you, if you don't repent, there was ultimatums to every church he told them he would do. Every church had a different ultimatum. He said, if you don't repent, I'll do this. Read the Revelations 2 and 3. Amen? Amen. How about, but they're not concerned. Most of the churches are not concerned about getting anyone else saved. Never witnessing to anyone else. Not caring if they go to hell or not. That's a lot of the church's attitudes today. Oh, well, we made it. They have to make it on their own. The Bible says we are all the witness. We are all ministers of reconciliation. Acts 1a says you shall receive power. The Holy Ghost has come upon you and you shall be witnesses unto me. First in Jerusalem, then Judea, and then he stretched the borders. I mean, you got to be Amen. faithful to witness yes. where you're at. In your own home, in your own family, in your own neighborhood, in your workplace, everywhere. We're all called to do that. We're all ministers of reconciliation. We're all ambassadors for Christ. Amen. Jesus said the works he did, we would do greater works. For he goes unto the Father. If Jesus came to seek and save the lost, what should we be doing? If the Master did it, we should be out there hiking and doing it too. Knocking on doors, getting out there, reaching them for him. Amen? Hallelujah. And we got greater ways to reach them today. He said, greater works you shall do. And we have greater ways to reach them today. They didn't have cars back in their days. We got cars. We got airplanes. We got everything to help. Every available means to get this gospel out. Can I hear an amen? We got amen. TVs. They never had TV or radio back in that day. 
That's the greater works, getting this gospel out. Amen. Amen. He said, you shall receive power. The Holy Ghost come upon you. The church has lost sight of why the power was given, not for a bless me club, but to get people saved. Amen. All the rest of the power and blessing are benefits of the cross. Yes. Complacency and laziness and lukewarmness all go together. They work together, working Amen. against Christians, working against the church of the living God. Yes. Amen. Amen. Lukewarmness means not enthusiastic, not having or showing energy or excitement, moderately warm, not hot, not cold, lacking conviction, half-hearted. Jesus told him in Revelation 3, I wish thou were hot or cold because thou art lukewarm. I will spew you out of my mouth. He was not satisfied with these kind of people. Amen. Can't you see how these work together? Complacency, laziness, and lukewarmness, satisfied with where they're at materially and spiritually, they don't realize that Jesus wasn't satisfied with them. He was disgusted and fed up with them and their attitude. He said they made him sick. He said, I'll spew you out of my mouth. Oh, Amen. Yes. Amen. The church of Laodicea was so wealthy and blessed, they thought that because of their prosperity, they thought they had the Lord's approval. Amen. I'm going to tell you something today. Prosperous churches and prosperity is not a sign of maturity. No. Amen. And Amen. it's not a sign of, of approval with God. No. He rebuked that wealthy church and said, he told them, he said, you're spiritually bankrupt. Yes. What happened to you? The church of Smyrna was opposite. He said, I know you're poor, but you're rich spiritually. This church was just the opposite. He said, I know you're rich, but you're poor. You're blind. Yes. You can't see no more. You can't see the Great Commission to fulfill it. You can't see the cross of Christ and the reason. He told him, he said, uh, you, you, just don't, you ain't got it no more. You become no more than a bless me club. You make me sick. Yes. They were doing some works. They were sending out missionaries, but they were doing it. The Bible says, you go on down and read that in Revelation 3. He said, behold, I stand knocking at the door. He's asking them to let him back in their churches, in your life. You say churches, you are the church. Right. You and I are the church. We just go to a meeting place. Amen. Hallelujah. Where two or three are gathered, there I am in the midst of you. Amen. Hallelujah. We are the temple of the living God today. And, and while I'm saying that, I want to ask you, you got room for Jesus in your house? Amen. Amen. When Jesus was born, they never had no room for him in the end. He had to go to the stable. He had to be go be born among the animals, hallelujah, because there was no room for him. I want to tell you something. Today, there a lot of Christians live their life, and there's no room for Jesus in their house, in their temple. He's spiritually knocking on the outside saying, will you let me back in? Yes. Will you let me back in to be your Lord of your life again? And that's what he's asking in our churches. And if you don't let him back in, I'm going to tell you what's going to happen to you. You're going to be like uh, uh, Eli's two sons, Hafni and whatever the other one's name was, Hafni. He wrote Ichabod above the door. He said the glory of the Lord has departed because of their sins. Amen. Amen. Eli was the, the priest, and his sons were into sin, and he wouldn't correct them. And when they died, and God even prophesied that they would, he, he told them, he said, the glory of the Lord has departed. If you don't let Jesus back into your houses, I'm going to tell you something, the glory of the Lord is going to depart. And it's going to wind up like the church of Ephesus. He said, if you don't repent, I will take your candlestick and I will take your church. Because you cease being a church when Jesus is not Lord in it and over it anymore. You cease being a church of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. This is a word straight from the throne of God. Hallelujah. You cease being a church when Jesus is not in it. Hallelujah. And he'll take it. And he'll close it. Amen. They thought that their prosperity was approval. Amen. 
They thought prosperity was a sign of spiritual maturity. In fact, they were spiritually bankrupt. I told you this. Also means indifferent. Lukewarmness means indifferent. Having or showing little zeal. Having or expressing little conviction. Being uninterested, disinterested. Being lazadaisical, sluggish, apathetic, nonchalant, unenthusiastic. This is a bad shape to be in. Jesus told him to repent of this attitude or he would spew them out of his mouth. In other words, he rejected them for this attitude and way. They lost their fire and zeal. This sounds like a lot of churches and Christians today. We are to fulfill the Great Commission, Matthew 28, 19, and 20. Mark 16, 15 through 20. It says to go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature and then baptize them in the name of the, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And the water baptize them. Amen. Jesus came to seek and save the lost. Luke 9, 56. We're to do the same. Luke 19, 9 and 10. John 14, 12. Jesus said the works he did, those that believe shall do also. We're to seek and save the lost also. Acts 1, 8. He said he gave us power to be witnesses. And we are all, 2 Corinthians 5, 17 and 18, we're all ministers of reconciliation. Jesus told the church of Laodicea yes. in Revelation 3, 19 and 20 to repent. Yes. If I, I, I'm, not, I'm calling you to repentance today. There's hope for you. If you missed it and you are in this, this church age, you're in this condition, there's hope for you today because all you have to do is repent and pray. Can I hear an amen? It's not all lost for you. Jesus gave them hope too. He said, just repent and get, get it right. That's what the Lord is saying today. If you're in this condition, you're complacent, you're lukewarm today, or you're cold, amen, you need to repent and get it back on track and ask God to help you, and he will. Amen. He just told them to repent and get it right again. Yes. Or he would do whatever he said. Amen. You don't want to go there. Just repent today. Amen. If you have become complacent, lazy, or lukewarm, or cold in your Christian walk, or have not worked for the kingdom, or lived for the kingdom, amen, living a amen. double life, in the enemy's camp plan, and then back in God's camp plan all the time. Yes. If you've done these things, or lived right for the kingdom, just repent as Jesus told five out of seven churches in Revelation 2 and 3 to do. Jesus told five out of seven churches to repent. Amen. Now, do you think that we need to repent today? That's not very good odds. Uh -uh. It's not a very good track record, is it? Nope. He told five out of seven churches to repent. Amen? Yes. We need to check our hearts. The Bible says to judge your own heart. We need to judge our hearts that God don't judge us. Amen? Because if you don't judge yourself and you don't check out your condition that you're in and repent of it, he said you will pay for it. Amen. There was all the maidens that he said he would do. You don't want to go there. Amen. No. Just repent. And ask him to forgive you and set you back on fire and restore the joy of your salvation and love again. When you repent, just forget the past, your condition of failures, and just start working for the kingdom again. Right where you're at, just start now. Yes. Start afresh. Start anew. Amen? Amen. If you're guilty of what I preached on, you need to repent, especially if you're in the condition of the church of Laodicea. He will spew you out of his mouth, and he will reject you. Can I hear an yes. amen? Amen. If you've been complacent, you've been indifferent. You know, the church of Laodicea, Laodicea means by the people, run by the people. That's why Jesus wasn't in that church anymore. They didn't need him. They used him for what they could get. And there's a lot of Christians in churches using God for what they can get today that they can do their own thing. That's wrong. And I'm telling you, he said, if you don't repent, he'd take your church. And Amen. there's some about to have Ichabod written over the doorpost. And he's about to take them. I'm here to tell you, repent today. Get changed. 
I want you to pray with me. If you're a church and you missed it, your whole church has missed it. If you're Christians and you know you're lukewarm, complacent, and cold, and you missed it, I want you to pray with me right now. Say, Father, forgive me. I'm sorry. I heard this message, and I know that word quickening to my soul and my spirit, and I know I'm off track. I know I'm wrong, and I ask you to forgive me right now. Yes. I ask you to set me back on fire, and I ask you to deliver me of those things that cause me to get into this condition and shape. Lord, set me back on fire and help me for, to work for you, to live for you, and fulfill the Great Commission. Yes. If you said that, he'll do it. He will do it. 1 John 1, 9, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. He'll do a twofold thing. He'll clean, He'll first forgive you, and He'll cleanse you. Yes. He'll cleanse you of that. Amen? Amen. We need to be cleansed, church. He said He provide Himself a glorious church without yes. spot, wrinkle, or blemish. And that's what He's doing. He's removing them. Yes. If you don't know Jesus today, say, Lord Jesus, I ask you to come into my life. I don't want to go to hell. Lord Jesus, I believe you died for my sins. You was uh, died for my sins, and you was resurrected on the third day. I ask you to come and redeem me from the curse of the law and bless me. I ask you to come into my heart, be the Lord and Savior of my life. I believe you died for my sins. You're the Son of God. You was resurrected. You are the resurrection. Lord Jesus, help me to love you and to work for you and to serve you and help fulfill the Great Commission. If you said that prayer, let the Holy Spirit set you within the church. Let him lead you and guide you where you need to go. And do what he tells you. Live for him and obey him and serve him. Can I hear an amen? You will be blessed. Yes. We love you. We'll see you the very next program. I pray you got blessed out of all this. May the blessing of the Lord rest upon you. Can I hear an amen? Amen. We love you. We love this city. And I want to see a mighty revival in this city. I want to see a mighty outpouring in this city. And that this will, Louisville, Kentucky, will be the hub of revival. And revival will go to the four corners of the earth. Sent out. By the Holy Spirit from Louisville, Kentucky. Amen.